good morning. It's morning yet. Mm -hmm. Two more minutes to hit noon. Before we start with the class, remember, we have to say the Angelus prayer. All right. We are going to start with the prayer. Okay, we have more people coming in. Okay. Let me show you my screen. Remember, if you have problems, if you have problems with the bar, always move it away from the picture, from the big screen. And here you can see the, the participants and then just put them right here. All right. Let's start with the prayer for the Angelus. Who would like to participate? Raise your hand in Zoom. Okay, so we have Jimena. Jimena, today I took the liberty to put the Angelus prayer here and, and we can go from there. Let me turn on your microphone and here we go. Can you hear me? Hi, teacher. Hello, Jimena. How are you? I'm fine, teacher. And you? I'm pretty good myself. Thanks for asking. Here we go. <clears throat> the angel of the Lord declared to Mary. And she conceived of the Holy Spirit. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Behold, the handmaid of the Lord. Be it done unto me according to thy word. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now and at the hour of our death. Amen. And the word was made flesh. And dwelt among us. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Pray for us, O Holy Mother of God, that we may be made worthy of the promises of Christ. Let us pray. Pour forth, we beseech thee, O Lord, thy grace into our hearts, that we to whom the incarnation of Christ, thy Son, was made known by the message of an angel, may by his passion and cross be brought to the glory of his resurrection through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Jimena. And goodbye. Goodbye, teacher. Okay. Now, to continue, uh, we must check video cameras at this time. Please turn on the video cameras so I can go with the list. Thank you. All right. Let me make it longer. I think I can see everybody here. Hello. Hi. Oh, very important. I need to unmute everybody. Hold on. Hello, participants. And here we go. <laughs> Bless you. <laughs> okay, so we have Jimena Aguilar. Present teacher. Thank you. And finally, Alessia Izarra. Present teacher. Thank you, guys. Now you can turn off your video cameras. Please <clears throat> turn off the webcams. And we are good to go. All right. I have a question. What's today's date? Who can help me? Mm -hmm. Let's see. Oh, okay. More people coming in late. Okay, Alessia, please, Alessia, help me. What's today's date? Teacher, to, today's date is Tuesday, the 55th of June, 2020. Aha, uh -huh. okay. I couldn't hear you because it was, was breaking up, but I thought you said Thursday, the 25th of June, 2020. Yes. Thank you. All right. Thanks, Alessia. And goodbye. Teacher. Yes, tell me. What's today's objective? Oh, today's objective. Very good question. Here we got, um, well, first objective is, I think, to practice more with the Angelus. We are good with that. And then cover phonics. Today's class is about phonics. And after phonics, oops, sorry, we will cover uh, questions for present perfect. Okay, so that's today's uh, topic, okay? Boom, 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 boom. Thanks for asking, that was really nice. Okay, now in the chat, let's see, Fabrizio says, hi teacher. Hi, back to you. Guys, 
in phonics? Well, we have to go to um, the book. Yes, let's open our books, pupils' books on page number 50, okay? Thank you, page 50. All right, what is it? Today, we focus on phonics. Okay, to start, pay attention here. Um, sometimes when I speak, I normally give a strong accent or give a, a higher intonation to the words, all right? Maybe one of you can help me. Okay, Angie, I think I hear your microphone is going off. Be careful with that. Thank you. Okay, so I said, uh, I was saying, what I was saying? I forgot. Oh, yes, yes. Pay attention to this line. Yeah. Can you say the words with me? Is that a question or an affirmative sentence? What do you, what do you say? Volunteers, please, raise a hand. Let me repeat. Can you say the words with me? Okay, Erika, we hear you. What did I say? A question or an affirmative sentence? A question, teacher. Okay, we know it's a question because we start with can and well. But if I don't use the intonation at the end, it's not a question. Let's hear, let's hear one more time. Can you say the words with me? Can you notice the difference, Erika? Yes, teacher. Okay, now let me ask you. Why is it important that we go with a different intonation in this sentence? The intonation changed the word. Okay, the change, change yes, that is correct. Okay. But, but also at the end, to make the question. Okay, let's hear Abigail. Abigail, please tell us, what's your opinion? Why is it important to go with an intonation, specifically in this first line? Teacher, the intonation is important with, because when you don't speak so good, the when you don't speak so good, the paragraph you don't understand what what they they did they did talk. Mm -hmm. They talk about yes, that's exactly the point. We need to stress. We need to give exact intonation when we refer to this. For example, bottle window and monkey we know that we talk about the syllables the stress in the syllables but in english it's not well it's like in spanish we don't have the same intonation for all the words take a look in this in, the, in this fourth line today giraffe below and again it moves from side to side okay how about we play the audio okay and we do some listening part right here pay attention to the pronunciation the intonation and also Practice at home, okay? I play the audio now. Pupil's book, page 50, 16. Focus on phonics. Listen and repeat. Can you say the words with me? Bottle, window, and monkey. Now, hear the stress at the end. Today, giraffe, below, again. Count the syllables. These have three. Elephant, jellyfish, family. Stressed at the end. Can you hear? Kangaroo, magazine, engineer. Okay, guys. So... This is very important. We know we must stress the words because they are important, but also in the right syllable. Let me get some helpers here. Maybe volunteers, yes? Who would like to repeat the words with me? Sebastian Cravero, perfect. Please, Sebastian, turn on your microphone. 
Hey, sure teacher. Yes, yes, yes. Oh, hi, Sebastian. Please repeat after me. Bottle. Bottle. Window. Window. Monkey. Sebastian. Monkey. Okay. Now, let's do the opposite. Monkey. Okay, okay. Today. Today. Giraffe. Giraffe. Below. Below. Again. Below. Again. Again. Okay. Now you do it on your own. Again. This this one's right here. Start. Elephant. Okay, good. The next Jellyfish. one. Jellyfish. Family. And here. Family. All right. Kangaroo. Mm -hmm. Magazine. Mm -hmm. Engineer. All right. Thank you. This is very important to remember. The syllables in English, like in Spanish, they move with the stress. I mean, the stress in the syllables, it moves. So you can, you can do it like this. Remember, it needs to go up. You know, the intonation goes up. Try not to speak it like flat in the same, in both or three syllables. Right? Yeah, just remember which one goes in there. All right, let's go with Janela. Hi, Janela. Good morning, good morning teacher. Good afternoon, Janela. Good afternoon. Okay, please. Um, you repeat these ones, the first line, the second line. Bottle, window, and monkey. Very good. And the fourth line? Today, giraffe, below, again. I think it's giraffe. One more time. Giraffe. Giraffe. Okay. This one? Elephant, jellyfish, family, kangaroo, magazine, engineer. Okay, Janela, remember, in this last line, the intonation goes at the end. Kangaroo, one more time. Kangaroo, kangaroo. Uh huh, next one. Magazine, mm -hmm. engineer. Engineer, thank you. Wonderful job. Okay, guys, I think that's perfect. And now we move on to. Present perfect questions with a little extra drama. All right, let me see. Uh, for that, I think I have a different one. Oh, here it is. Pay attention. When I say, have you ever seen a ghost? This is something very crazy, right? I don't, I don't want to see a ghost. Okay, this is a very good example of present perfect, okay? Let me ask a person to help me conduct this. Probably Christopher Galvez. Okay, Christopher, are you there? Okay, teacher. All right, Christopher, pay attention to this. If I ask you, have you seen a ghost? It's, an, it's a regular thing, happens all the time, or is an important event? What do you say? What is it? Imagine. Before? Yes, of course. You have to see something that is not common. So it's an important event. All right, maybe not a ghost, probably a movie star or uh, some famous a star. All right, let's go with star. Yeah. Okay, let me ask this question again. Have you seen a star? What do you say? Um, no, I have. Okay, you say no, I haven't. That's correct because this is a short answer. Remember, Christopher, uh, when you have the, the information in the question, for example, have you seen a star? We only have to confirm with a yes or deny with a no. But we have to continue with what is the start of the question. This is the start, the auxiliary half. Okay, but how about now? Let me make this a little dramatic, okay? I want to know if you have, have you ever seen, look, now I include my friend ever, to give an extra drama to the question. Have you ever seen, I don't know, um, I don't know, <laughs> a lion? Yeah, this is not very common, right? What do you say? Um, Maybe this Yes, way? I have. Oh, perfect, you say yes, I have. All right, and maybe if I put a different thing, have you ever seen um, video game character how about that do you like video games christopher 
Yes. All right. Have you ever seen a video game character alive in front of you? Yes or no? Mm, yes. Oh, yes? Mm, that's very good. Like Naruto, for example? No. Oh, okay. But do you know what I mean with Naruto, right? Okay. Okay. So if you say, no, I haven't, but if you want to express this, um, maybe with a desire that you want this to happen, we can say yet. Okay? Yet is my favorite word, Christopher, because it means that it's, it's not for now, but later, yes. So, no, I haven't yet. Okay. I also had another uh, student for these questions um, with, you know, drama. He said, teacher, but maybe yes or maybe no. Okay. For those ones who have this classic, it depends answer, we can have this option, Christopher. Maybe I have, I don't remember. Or maybe I haven't. Thank you, Christopher. All right, now back to, back to the book. Here are some questions that are set for us from the book, which are really interesting. Eh? Let, me, let me see. I can ask Romina, yes? Are you here, Romina? Hi, Hello, Romina. Let me ask this question to you. Have you ever heard dolphins on TV? No, I haven't yet. Oh, okay. That means that you want the desire that this to happen soon or at any time. Good. Next question. Next question. Romina, have you ever seen a crab in a restaurant? Yes, I haven't yet. Oh, so it means yes, I haven't yet or no, I haven't yet. I couldn't hear. Yes, I haven't yet. Uh, yes, I have. Yes, teacher. Oh, okay. So it's yes, I have. Don't... Uh, yes, I have. Oh, okay, okay. Now you got it. Yeah, don't mix the answers. It's not good to say yes and then no at the same time. Okay, question number three. Romina, have you ever eaten lobster? No, I haven't yet. Okay, that's good. Me, me neither. Eh? I, I haven't e eaten eaten lobster, but I know one day I will. I will have. I will have eaten it. All right. Uh, for question four, Romina, have you ever taken a photo of a dolphin? Yes, I have. Wonderful. How was the How was the opportunity? Interesting. Where were you when you took the picture? Uh, teacher, sorry, you can repeat the question, please. Okay, so you have taken the picture or the photo of a dolphin. Where? Where were you? In the zoo. Oh, ho, ho, amazing. Thank you. Thanks so much, Romina, and goodbye. Bye. All right. Oh, sorry. <laughs> yeah, bye. I'm sorry, I was very quick on that. Mm -hmm. To continue with the next four questions. Who would like to answer this question? These questions are very interesting, huh? They are not very common. Okay, any volunteer? Maybe Lucas, perhaps? Oh, Jimena wants to participate. Okay, let's, let's try with Jimena. Okay, Jimena. Yes, teacher. Okay, we have four more questions for you. Here we go. Okay, teacher. Or maybe we can switch it up a little. How about you ask these questions to me? Is that good? Okay, teacher. All right, ask question number five. Mm, have you have you ever had a fish for a pet? Uh, yes, yes, I have. It was really nice, but it only lasted for two weeks. I'm not very good at pets. Okay, question six. Have you ever swum in the sea? Mm, yes, I have. Usually on um, you know holidays, especially summer break. Next question. Have you ever called an octopus? Uh, no, I haven't yet, but I'm planning to, yeah. <laughs> Have you ever listened l listening to a well song on CD? Mm, if I have ever listened, listened to a whale song on the CD, I think yes, yes, yes I have. When I was teaching English a few years ago, it was really nice. Yeah, I liked it. It's a beautiful, very deep sound. 
Thanks, Jimena. Wonderful. Goodbye. Goodbye, teacher. Goodbye. All right, guys. So basically, let me show you one more time what I have on the board. When we, when we need to ask about an important event, remember, important event, but not just an important event, also for a recent past or past connected to the present, okay, we use present perfect. We know that. We know that. But for questions, if you want to ask a little season, a little bit more of drama, we use the word ever. And the answers are very quick because the information is here in the question. Have you ever seen a video game character? Yes, I have. Or no, I haven't. And if I want to express my desire that this to happen soon or on a time, I say yet. I haven't seen it yet. Well, no, I haven't yet. If you are one of those guys that they don't know and say so-so, you can say maybe I have or maybe I haven't, but I just don't recall or don't remember. And here are more options here, right? So what we already seen. Have you ever caught an octopus? No, I haven't yet. Or no, I haven't. Or just simply, yes, I have. All right. Now that we cover this part, we have to do a writing task. This is what we must do, including myself. We must write eight more questions with this structure. Remember, present perfect in question using ever to make it dramatic. Okay. For a friend, use the questionnaire to help you. This is a questionnaire you can use to help yourself. Let me see. Maybe I can ask. Uh, Hmm. They have already participated. Cesar Rondon. Cesar, are you there? Okay. Well, yes, Cesar. teacher. Hi, Cesar. Please, give me some other question. Maybe something impressive about a basketball game. How can you ask me huh? that? Can you ask me about a basketball game? Oh. Uh, Remember the beginning? I, I... Have, have you have asked... You, the, um, uh, do you ever... Um, what is the verb that we connect with basketball game? Mm. Do we read basketball games or do we play basketball games? Play. Okay, let's go with that question. Let's have see. you ever... Mm -hmm. Have you ever... Play basketball? Uh-huh, for example. It's a very nice basketball? sport. Yes, very good, very good. Let me ask this question back to you, because I know you like basketball. I have seen you sometime playing. So, Chris, uh, um, excuse me, Cesar, have you ever played mm -hmm. basketball? What's your uh, answer? I play basketball the... the mm -hmm. Remember, Cesar, when the information is in the question, you say yes or no. Let's try yes. it. Have you ever played basketball? Yes. Yes, and? Yes, I. Uh-huh, yes, I? Yes, I am. Wait. I have. Okay. I, I have. Hold on, cowboy. If the question has a half, you have to say, yes, I have. Let me yes, ask. I have. Okay. Do you play basketball with another student from this classroom? What's his name? Um, Christopher? Yes, Christopher Bassan. Very good. Let me ask this question, okay? Has Christopher, oh, Bassan, just make it short. Has Bassan ever played with you? What's the answer? Uh, sometimes. Uh, okay, but the answer is? Yes. Uh -huh. Yes, who? Yes. Yes, and who? Who are we talking about? We are talking about Basan. So it's yes. Mm -hmm. Yes. So, uh huh. I have. But you are not Basan. No, no, I see. Yes, he has. Oh, yes, he and half. Hey, hold on, cowboy. What happened here? The question is starts with has. Do we uh -huh. say half? What do we say to the end? No. He has. Uh-huh, very good. Yes. Thank you. That was just optional. All right, guys. That's it for now. Remember, you have to do this for... Oh, I didn't say it. Tomorrow, yes? <laughs> Tomorrow. Tomorrow, you bring it to the class and you 
we will switch to questionnaires, okay? You create questionnaires, eight questions using have you ever about something interesting, yeah? And now we move to the joke corner. This is a pretty funny joke, eh? Let me tell you the joke. What kind of shells will you always find in the sea? <laughs> we have different kinds of different varieties, right? Especially for the Peruvian, Peruvian sea. Lots of them. Okay, let's hear Abigail. Abigail, what's, what's the answer? What kind of shells will you always find in the sea? Abigail? Teacher. Uh -huh. I can shell. Um... Uh -huh. What's the answer? No? Let me tell you the answer. Wet or full of water shells. So wet ones. Ha, 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 ha. What do you think? Was it funny? So, 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 teacher. <laughs> Thank you. Thanks for being honest. Okay, let's see. I have Alessia with the upper hand. Okay, Alessia, can you turn on your microphone? Yes, teacher. Tell me your, give me an honest opinion. What, what did you think about this joke? Was it funny? Mm, maybe. <laughs> okay, would you like to hear a very funny joke? Yes. All right. I will tell you a joke, which is really funny. It has a little bit of English and Spanish, okay? But it's okay. Um, but with one condition. Tomorrow, you investigate, okay? You, you search the web. You, you surf the web. And you bring a joke for us that is funny in English. Is that good? Okay, teacher. All right. Good deal. Let's hear. <clears throat> Let me see if I remember. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. This is a good joke. I, I, I heard this joke when I, well, I used to live for a long time in Miami, in Florida, and I have lots of friends from, uh, from Cuba, a big Cuban community. So my friend said once, hey, um, you know, we had a party for some Cuban family members. And I said, really? And what happened? And they told me the story. Well, we prepare a big party outside of the airport and we, we hang a big, big welcome sign. The welcome sign said like this. Let me put it on the screen. It's a good thing that I can show you with the screen. The, 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 the sign said, welcome, right? Welcome Cubanos. Very easy, right? Because it's a mix of English and Spanish. All right. And what happened is, is really incredible. Once the, the, the aircraft, you know, the, the plane landed, all the airplane crew, the, the captain, the flight hostess, everybody was out of the plane except the Cubans. And the family was waiting outside, Alessia, and they were worried what happened with our families, our members. We want to see them. And they didn't want to come out. They were scared. So the captain of the plane got back into the plane and said, welcome, you are here in America, come out. And they said, no, 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 no vamos a salir, no vamos a salir. <laughs> and the captain said, but why? Why don't you want to come out? No nos vamos hasta que se vaya well. Well? Who is well? In the sign, it says, well, come cubanos. No, 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 we don't come out. Because well, it's Cubans. Ha, ha, ha. Did you get the joke? Yes, teacher. Was it funny? Mm, yes. All right, thank you. Extra five points for you today. Take a look. One, two, three, four, and five. Five points. Thanks, Alessia. Wonderful. Uh, teacher. Yeah, tell me. Teacher, I have a question for you. All right, tell me. Mm, have you ever gone to the University of Cambridge? Oh, no, I haven't yet. I haven't yet. Wonderful. But I am planning to, yeah, why not to visit after the quarantine goes out? Yes, so I haven't yet. Thank you, Alessia. That was wonderful. Yes, interesting to have. All righty, guys, what page is next? Okay, what comes after 50? 50? 51. Oh my goodness. I think we can skip this page for tomorrow. Would you like me to skip the page? Tell me. Oh, sorry, no. Please. No. Okay. I like that. Are you ready? This is the moment that every kid is waiting for. The hero, the one, the only, Mr. Digo Dibons. Okay. Everybody ready? Yes? 
let me put this in the best quality as possible. And we are here for the movie. Sand, you should be more careful, Mr. Greedy. <laughs> Quickly! <gasps> you've pulled these plants and you've opened this cave! <laughs> I've known about these caves since 1971. It was a big story in the news. But will this one take us under the pyramid of the sun? Uh, uh, wait for me! That Aztec gold's mine! Mine! <laughs> in ancient mythology, this is the place where their gods made the sun, the moon, and the universe. <sighs> What does it mean, Dad? <laughs> it means that there's been gold here for hundreds of years! <laughs> I'll be surprised if there's gold here. Quetzalcoatl got his long green feathers here. Oh, a turtle shell. The turtle meant both earth and water to... You've given us another great lesson, Bones. I haven't finished. Turtles were also for people like you, Greedy. Hard and strong on the outside, but soft and weak on the inside. <laughs> Good one, Dad. Very funny, Bones. Now, why isn't there any gold? Because gold wasn't important to the Aztecs. The long green feathers of the Quetzal bird were their greatest treasure. Richard's using my mobile to follow us. I've given him instructions to destroy this old place, if you don't help me. Okay. We're at the wrong place. Come on, it'll soon be the longest day. All right, what an interesting episode this time. Okay, so we know that Diggory Bones now is in Mexico City and he is being under so much pressure thanks to this guy. I am greedy. Alrighty, uh, for this activity, as usual, we first listen to um, the audio or we watch the video, and then we take turns to participate in this role play. I have a question and you may have an answer. Who would like to be Digori Bones for role play? Tomorrow, we, or tomorrow we continue, I don't know. Let's see, we have time? Yes, we do have time. Okay, who would like to be Digori Bones? Raise a hand. I don't see it. Where is it? Oh, okay. All right. Let's go with Jimena. Jimena, you are Digori. And I'm ready, sir. all right. Next person for Emily. Who would like to be Emily? Uh huh. Alessia. Okay. Well, Alessia, thanks for participating. Alessia, you are Emily. And finally, I am. I am greedy. Who can be I am greedy? Christopher Bassan, of course. Okay, Mr. Bassan, you are I am greedy. Are we ready? We start in three, two, one, go. Quicksand, 
You should be more careful, Mr. Grady. Quickly. You've pulled these plants and you've opened this cave. I found a torch. Come on, let's go and look at the cave. I have known about these caves since 1971. It was a big story in the news. But will this one take us under the pyramid of the sun? Wait for me. That's Aztec gold, mine. Mine. In ancient mythology, this is the place where their gods met the sun, the moon, and the universe. What does it mean that? It means they there's been gold here for hundreds of years. I'll be surprised if there's gold here. Get a cold got his love. Green feathers here. A turtle shell. The turtle means both air and water too. You have given us another great lesson, Bones. I I haven't finished. Turtles were also for people like you, Greedy. Harold is strong on the out, outset, but soft and weak on the inside. But one that? Very funny, Bones. How we isn't they any gold? Because gold wasn't important to the Aztecs. The long green feathers of the castle bird were, the, were their greatest treasure. Richard, I sent my mobile to follow us. I have given film instruction to destroy this old place if you don't help me. Okay. We're at the wrong place. Come on, it soon be the longest day. Oh no, that is a trap. Okay, guys, this is very interesting. The story is really good. The pronunciation, everything you have, remember you have it in Cambridge LMS. You can go over there and, and look for, for this episode and listen and practice as well. Tomorrow, we will use this as reading comprehension, have some questions to make and also to participate with more role plays. Thanks everybody. Have a wonderful time, okay? And stay home. Bye kids. Bye teacher. Bye teacher. Bye. Bye teacher. Bye 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 bye